In this video, I want to talk about the regulation of glycogen metabolism. So we talked about glycogen synthase and glycogen phosphorylase as both being enzymes involved in either making or breaking down glycogen, which brings me to my points here. So glycogen phosphorylase breaks down glycogen. We talked about how that makes glucose 1-phosphate, which can be converted into glucose 6-phosphate, which can go on to glycolysis. Glycogen synthase, on the other hand, makes or synthesizes glycogen. It doesn't break it down. It adds glucose, uh, adds a glucose unit to a glycogen chain. So now, these two enzymes do opposite things, right? And because of that, we would never want both of them to be active at the same time. At the same time, so we never want both active at the same time. We don't want to make glycogen and break glycogen at the same time. That would make no sense. It would be counterproductive. So we want one to be active while the other is inactive. Okay. So glycogen phosphorylase, it breaks down glycogen, frees up glucose, which goes to glycolysis so that, that, so that we can make energy. So when would this be active? When would we want to make energy? Well, this would be active during low energy states, right? This would be active when we want to make energy. So when we have low energy, we want to make energy, right? And it would be inactive during high energy states. If we already have energy, there's no sense in making more. So glycogen synthase would actually be the opposite, right? When would we want to make glycogen? When we want to store glucose, right? This is when we have plenty of glucose, when we have too much energy. So this would be active during high energy states, and it would be inactive during low energy states. So essentially, glycogen phosphorylase is involved in making energy, whereas glycogen synthase is involved in storing energy. Okay, so now these are both regulated. They're regulated allosterically and covalently, as, co as far as covalent modification, both of them. Now, the covalent modification is actually controlled by hormones. Um, I'll get to the allosteric regulation in just a moment. So which hormones control this? There's insulin, and there's also glucagon and epinephrine. And I don't want to talk too much about these. I just want to give you just enough information to help you understand how these things regulate these enzymes that we're talking about. So insulin, its function is to lower blood glucose levels. Okay, You're probably familiar with insulin being involved with uh, individuals who are diabetic. They have high blood glucose levels. Um, insulin is meant to lower blood glucose levels. Um, we'll talk more about that actually later in the in future videos. So insulin's function is to lower blood glucose levels so it responds to high blood glucose levels. Okay, um, It responds to high blood glucose levels and says okay I need to lower them so its function is to lower blood glucose levels. Glucagon and epinephrine, okay, the way I kind of remember glucagon, glucagon, I think, oh no, glucose is gone, so make more, right? So it's actually involved in increasing blood glucose levels, so it actually responds to low blood glucose levels. So when blood glucose levels are low, we want to increase them. Epinephrine, you might already know it as the fight or flight hormone. So when you're in danger, right, epinephrine uh, is active. And epinephrine actually also functions, functions like glucagon in that it increases blood glucose levels because you need energy when you need to fight or fly. So you're going to need to increase the blood glucose levels so that you can break it down for energy. So um, what would these hormones here, how would they play a role in activating the phosphorylase or deactivating the phosphorylase or activating or deactivating the synthase? Well, we just mentioned up here that the phosphorylase is involved in making energy, right? It breaks down glycogen to make more glucose, right? So, so insulin, insulin, what would it activate? If its job is to lower the blood glucose levels, well, how, which one of these enzymes lowers blood glucose levels? Well, glycogen synthase takes glucose and stores it as glycogen, whereas phosphorylase takes glycogen and frees up glucose. So glycogen phosphorylase increases glucose levels, whereas glycogen synthase 
decreases glucose levels. So which, which hormones work with that? So then insulin would activate the, the, the enzyme that decreases blood glucose levels. So it's going to activate glycogen synthase. Whereas glucagon and epinephrine want to increase blood glucose, they will activate glycogen phosphorylase. And at the same time, they will each each hormone right um, will deactivate the other one right. So if this will deactivate the phosphorylase, right? It'll deactivate the thing that increases blood glucose levels, and glucagon will deactivate the synthase, right? Especially since if one is on, you want to make sure that the other is off. So let's sort of do a diagram for this specifically with glycogen phosphorylase. So glycogen phosphorylase is the enzyme that increases blood glucose levels, or just glucose levels in general. I don't even need to write this blood portion here. Let me just cross that out. But even though that may, the case, may be the case. Anyway, if we imagine this, this enzyme here is glycogen phosphorylase. Actually, all of these are. But we're going to go into detail on what's going on here. So this here is glycogen phosphorylase. And this is glycogen phosphorylase specifically in its T form, its T state. And we remember that the T state was the inactive form of the enzyme. Okay. Now, what would happen if we added an enzyme called phosphorylase kinase? Uh, what would that thing do? Well, it's a kinase, so it's going to add phosphates to something. What is it going to add phosphates to? And where are these phosphates coming from? Since it's a kinase, it's attaching phosphates from ATP. Okay. Um, so that's, we're going to go from ATP to ADP. Now, it's adding these phosphates from, from ATP to phosphorylase. So it's adding them to glycogen phosphorylase. And in this case, we're actually adding two ATP, and we're going to get out two ADP so that we have a phosphate group here and a phosphate group here. So now, this is a form of covalent modification here. This is a form of covalent modification. We're making these bonds to, to, to these phosphate groups to create an R form, an active, the active form of the enzyme. So now, this here is now basically the, a, a like permanently active, well not permanently, excuse me, it's, it's a covalently modified active form. So this thing is going to be active no matter what, okay? Um, so what would trigger or what would stimulate phosphorylase kinase? What would covalently activate this? Well, which hormones involved in this? Well, these are the ones that are going to be the ones that increase blood glucose levels. So this is going to be stimulated by glucagon and epinephrine. Okay, so this is one way to activate glycogen phosphorylase. Now, when it, as long as it has these phosphates on it, it's pretty much going to be active. Okay, now if we want to go ahead and deactivate that, then we'll add a phosphoprotein phosphatase. So this is a protein that has phosphates on it, and we're going to phosphatase it, right? We're going to hydrolyze some phosphate groups off. So we're going to add some waters, and we're actually going to get, um, we're actually going to add two waters and get two phosphate groups off to, to go back into this inactive T form. So which, en which hormone would stimulate, stimulate this enzyme's activity? Well, the one that would make, make glycogen phosphorylase inactive, right? Which would be the insulin. So now this here that I've just talked about, this is all covalent modification and how that regulates. So this, this everything I just talked about um, in this sort of area here was covalent modification and how covalent modification can regulate this enzyme's activity. Now, what about allosteric regulation? So now, so this, this inactive T form here can be allosterically regulated to become active. So that's this here, that's this, that's this going here, going on over here. So here we can go from the T form to the R form, right, which is active. If, if, what happens, right? When would a phosphorylase be active? Well, one of the allosteric regulators is um, high levels of AMP. So high levels of AMP would allosterically regulate this T form and activate it because this is an indicator of low energy. It indicates 
low energy. So if this indicates low energy, glycogen phosphorylase is increasing the blood glucose co concentration so that we can go to glycolysis. So we want that to happen when we have a low energy. So high levels of AMP indicate that we've used up a bunch of ATP. So that would be an allosteric activator of glycogen phosphorylase. Okay, so this thing here is an activator. There are two inhibitors that I'm going to mention. Those two inhibitors are, um, are things that indicate high energy, right? So that would be things like ATP um, and or G6P. These are both allosteric inhibitors, right? They're going to favor the T form. So these both indicate, ATP indicates high energy, right? That indicates high energy. Whereas the G6P indicates um, that we have um, plenty of glucose around, okay? Indicates a high amount of glucose already. So there's no sense in freeing up more glucose if we already have plenty around. So we'll inactivate the, the, the phosphorylase. So what do we have over here? So this here is allosteric regulation. All these vertical arrows describe allosteric regulation. These horizontal arrows describe allosteric regulation. So here, what we have here, um, there's actually one more thing that I want to mention briefly. And that's that when we have, when we have um, once the phosphate groups here are attached, this thing is active. So here, this is actually a slightly more active form. It's still an R form, and it's still active. Um, but it's a little bit more active, a little bit more active than this one up here. And the reason why is because if there's a high level, if there's a high amount of glucose around, if there's glucose around, then that will actually, if there's a lot of glucose around, that's going to allosterically inhibit this this uh, this enzyme a little bit more. So um, this is not like too too crazy, but um, the whole idea is that is that if there's a bunch of glucose around, it's going to be a little bit less active. But if there's no glucose around, then you'll prefer this more active form, right? To to be to be making more glucose. Okay. So that's that's this is specifically glycogen phosphorylase, and we also there's also glycogen synthase. So glycogen synthase, I'm not actually going to draw out the whole crazy diagram for it, but I just want to talk about it really quickly. So it has the opposite effects of phosphorylation, so which, which I wanted to mention really briefly before I go on, is that notice here we phosphorylated right, the inactive phosphorylase right, um, to make it active. So phosphorylating this protein got it into the R form, which was active. Now synthase, glycogen synthase, when it's phosphorylated, it's actually inactive. So glucagon and epinephrine, they stimulate the phosphorylation of both the phosphorylase and the synthase. So phosphorylation of the phosphorylase, as we just saw above, it activated it, right? But phosphorylation of the synthase, that inactivates the synthase. So in, both, in this case, what ends up happening is that, well, we have the phosphorylase active and the synthase inactive. So what are we doing? We're breaking down glycogen to increase the blood glucose levels, which makes sense because that's what both of these hormones are supposed to do. Now, insulin stimulates the dephosphorylation of both enzymes. So when the phosphorylase, which we just talked about just up there, when it's dephosphorylated, when this phosphorylase is dephosphorylated, it's in its T form, it's inactive form. Whereas the dephosphorylation, whoops, the dephosphorylation of the synthase actually activates it. So in this case, right, we have the synthase active and the phosphorylase inactive. So what happens? Glycogen is formed to decrease blood glucose levels, which is which makes sense because insulin is supposed to decrease blood glucose levels. As far as allosteric control of glycogen synthase goes, uh, a high amount of G6P will activate the dephosphorylation of the synthase. So um, so dephosphorylation of synthase would activates the synthase. So um, even when there's no uh, insulin around, right, to actually to uh, to actually you know do this covalent modification here, um, there there is this allosteric control that can that can you know get glycogen synthase to do what it needs to do. So um, I wrote here in purple that you could try drawing a model similar to the one above, but do it for glycogen synthase. So if you're interested and want to sort of test your knowledge, go ahead and do that. Um, do a little diagram sort of like this, but instead of doing it for glycogen phosphorylase, try it for glycogen synthase, given, given this information down here. I hope that video was helpful. Thanks for watching.